just going to the doctor. We we say you you really should try to get blood work, you know, at least twice a year, at least once a year, but if you get it done every couple months. But the standard blood work, as you say, is as good as a screen door in a submarine. But I don't think we've ever really uh, I know, I know there's not just one answer to this, but maybe like top five or six, seven um, markers that you think are non-negotiable. Yeah. These are the ones you got to ask your doctor. These are the markers you need to be looking for for overall health and longevity. We got yeah. the vitamin D and magnesium. What else is the guru recommend? And health and longevity is a key word. So we know that there's certain <clears throat> markers that are, put you increased risk for mortality, which is death, morbidity. Hemoglobin A1C. We've heard about it before. This is a 90 to 120 day marker of your blood sugar control, right? Glucose is the sugar in your blood. It's actually toxic to the blood. So you actually want to get into the cell and burn glucose or take the glucose in there and make glycogen for your muscle or it'll be converted to a triglyceride and stored as fat. That is kind of the fate of glucose. Now, if your glucose is running too high, it'll actually start to put like um, a sugar coating around your red blood cells. And you've got six trillion of these red blood cells floating in your blood, Joe. Joe. So it's like a crust on bread or like a glazed donut. Yeah, I say you got glazed donuts. You got glazed donuts, and then sticky red blood cells start to stick together and can inhibit oxygen flow. Now, keep in mind, a small capillary is about. Mm, seven microns a capillary to your fingernail your toe or your eyeball is seven microns in diameter a red blood cell is eight microns so how the hell does a red blood cell who's eight microns in diameter squeeze or get to a seven through a seven micron capillary i already said the word it's got to squeeze and change shape if it's sticky and it's stuck to other red blood cells you're not getting oxygen to the target tissue joe i hear you ah so 5.0, 5.2 5.0, 5.2 is a great place for your hemoglobin A1C linked to longevity, also linked to reduced risk of dementia. Mm. Dementia, which is a huge problem in this country. Right now, if you're like, I think it's 6.4 or over, you're diabetic. 5.7 or higher, you're pre-diabetic. But my goal is to get my hemoglobin A1C back down to under 5.2. That's my first answer, Joe. Under 5.2. That's a goal. Okay. Another consideration, C-reactive protein. This is nothing new anymore. This is an inflammatory marker. They call it an acute inflammatory marker, which means you can train heavy the day before. CRP will be up. You can be eating inflammatory foods like chicken and create some increase in inflammation measured very easily, very directly through C-reactive protein. Okay, so we like a C. The range is zero to three on blood. I target less than 1.0. Less than less 1.0. than 1.0. Now, if you're you know out there and you're training hard, don't be a don't be a freaking fool and go in for blood work on Friday morning and you did legs Thursday night. <laughs> I talked about that a couple of weeks All ago. Right, I know l- people get scared. Their doctors then calling. Yeah. Them. So listen, if you're going for blood work, you know, do two or three days. Like, take it easy, brother, sister, and just get, you know, get your blood work so they're not falsely seeing a high C-reactor protein or even these things called liver enzymes, which could be muscle enzymes. Yes. All yes. right. So C-reactor protein, hemoglobin A1C, certainly um, a triglyceride HDL ratio. I think even better than a cholesterol HDL ratio, Joe, as it relates to heart disease and diabetes. You want it less than two to one. So if your HDLs are 50, you want your triglycerides less than 100. Triglyceride HDL ratio. And the cholesterol HDL ratio is important too. Like if you're, you want like 3.5 to one or less. So if you have a, hey, a cholesterol 175, you know, you want to have your HDLs, you know, 50 or higher, something like that. So that's another important parameter. Fasting insulin. Uh. Aha. So you should be fasting 12 hours for your blood work. If your insulin levels are high, like over 10, and you've been fasting, that means there's a chance you're going into prediabetes, and insulin actually feeds tumors. So there's some research that shows high fasting insulin, higher incidence of feeding cancer cells. Mm. So that's important. And we also know that insulin, um, when you have high insulin levels, you store fat right? Yes. Okay. So if you have a high fasting insulin, you may need a lower carbohydrate type diet. In fact, I just came up with something. It's a macronutrient profiling. If anyone wants it, they can email me and I help people determine what should be the ratio of protein, carbs, and fat. In other words, what is their carb threshold? What's their carb tipping point? And fasting insul- your fasting insulin score 
is one of the considerations. And what did you say? What was the um, what are we looking for there for Under, definitely uh, less than ten? Less than ten. Definitely less than ten. Okay, that's a good one. Um, red blood cell magnesium we discussed we, yep. five point two or higher. We vitamin D sixty to ninety. So again, I think these are non negotiable. Did I leave anything out, Joe? I felt like I left one out. Uh, oh, thyroid. We yeah, want to talk about. Come on, brother. Thyroid. Now listen, your thyroid regulates your metabolism, your temperature. And as we get older, your thyroid levels start to decline a bit, known as thyropause. But oftentimes, we do it to ourselves. Um, we're exercising too hard. We're dieting too hard. We're intermittent fasting too long. We're doing these things that can suppress thyroid. Then you go to the doctor. You get a TSH and a T4. Not good enough. Not even close. TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, is a pituitary hormone. And T4 is not even really that active of a thyroid hormone. It's about your T3 levels, which is five times stronger than T4. But really, Joe, it's about your free T3. That's free to get into your cells. Boom, turn on metabolism. But I'm going to go one step further, Joe, man. Your free T3 reverse T3 ratio. Ooh. Now, reverse T3 is what's called an isomer. It's the biologically inactive form of T3. Think of it like plugging into the receptor site and doing nothing. It's like brake pedal. You want a free T3, reverse T3 ratio of greater than 2. So if your mm, free T3 is 3.0, you want your reverse T3 below 15. Just move the freaking decimal. 3.0 is 30. Reverse T3, less than 15. To me, these are non-negotiable functional tests that'll tell you about mortality, morbidity, and certainly your overall function. That is oh la- testosterone, testosterone and free testosterone. That was that's Boom. one more. So for me, with a lot of my male clients over forty, it's all about TNT. What's your thyroid? What's your testosterone? It's about TNT. 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 Like TNT. It. That's it. You, you, you're not going to optimize in the gym, in your office, being a dad, being a husband or a wife with low thyroid or low testosterone. Both of which I had. Exactly. Well, listen, we're <laughs> yeah, in a grind, bro. Yeah. So doing there's a lot of things we're doing that's suppressing our thyroid and testosterone. A typical blood work, testosterone 3 to 1100 is the range. You do, you're a 410. Your doctor says you're okay. And they're not even checking the free testosterone. So my, I think my panel free testosterone goes from like 4 to 15. I like a 9 or higher. Now, Joe. Do you know what makes testosterone free or bound? Do you know the difference with what's the, the key there? What, no, that's what I wanted to ask you, what makes it. I know, but can you just explain the, what's the difference, people wondering, yeah. what's the difference between free testosterone yeah. and total testosterone? Right, so about 98% of all your hormones in your blood are not in the free form. They're, they're connected to a blood protein carrier say albumin. So they're locked together with a, with a protein carrier. So they can't release from the protein and get into the cell and turn on metabolism, thyroid, or maybe like protein synthesis, like testosterone. So only about 2% of your hormones are in the free fraction. So looking at your free testosterone, you want to see a robust testosterone, let's say 650, 700, and about 2% in the free fraction. So, Joe, if you had a testosterone of 700 and 2% was free, you have a free testosterone of 14. That's pretty freaking good. Now, what actually causes low free testosterone? If your testosterone levels are normal, it's sex hormone binding globulin. Think of that as testosterone binding protein, where it's holding on to your testosterone too hard, there's too many binding globulins, and when that's high, your free testosterone fraction is low. What causes sex hormone binding globulin to go up? inflammation, lack of sleep, nutritional deficiencies, certain medications, overtraining, and I'm going to say it, Joe, I'm going to tick some people off, intermittent fasting. Ooh. Boom. But and but I know sleep I've I've heard a lot of um other respected doctors talking about sleep might be the number one factor for free testosterone, correct? I, the, and I, yeah. mine I think mine was like one. And that's when I was what? sleeping three hours a night. One of my original hmm. blood works. Uh, even when my testosterone raised a little bit after we made some changes, my free was still super low. And that's when I was sleeping three hours a night. And I was doing everything else right. So that was my little yeah. 
in-house study of, wow, sleep really does make a huge difference for your free, you know, usable testosterone. And your growth hormone and everything no, else. Yeah, yeah, I get sleep you could I guess you could link no. to everything. By the basically. way, you look pretty rested today. You slept okay last I'm, night? I'm I'm I've slowly made a change. 